Hi, welcome back to another episode of Traveling Through the Bible. I'm Greg the Chef Riley. I'm Jenny the sister. A little puppy today. I'm having a fun day. We always have fun days. Yeah. But um, you're laughing a ton today, so it's kind of contagious. It is. I need to get it together. If you don't have fun in this life, you shouldn't be in this life, right? Right. It's too short. This is too short. We have fun. Yeah. And we have some special guests today. I'm so excited. It's um, going to be cool. Pastor Fultz from Phoenix and Russ Miller from Creation Ministries yep. from Flagstaff are coming down. We're going to get a chit-chat with them, and then they're doing a tour in April with us. It's going to be cool. He has a different take on things, so check this out. Now, you just got back, what, last, a couple months ago you just got back? No, year, uh, six months ago. Well, wow, time flies. Yeah. How was it? Fantastic. And you're going again. We are going again. And you're taking Russ with you. I am. Now, what's the difference between the tour that you just got back from and the tour that you're going to be doing with Russ? We were just on the traditional tour, Greg, before we went to Israel, went to Petra, and we did the uh, Seven Churches of Revelation in Turkey, which was phenomenal. But this tour is going to be highlighted, and it really is something that uh, is different than any tour I've ever done. And that is that a few years ago, I ran across Russ. He came to our church, and he's a creationist. He gives a wonderful story of the biblical idea of creation and the flood, and how that has been uh, a part and parcel to our faith. And so on this tour, uh, Russ is going to give to us how the creation story and the story of the flood uh, is, is important to our Christian faith, how it connects to the Holy Land and the message of Jesus and all of that. It just all connects together. And I can't think of anybody better than Russ <laughs> to give us that message. It's great. Now, we just got back from lunch, and Russ, I, I, you gave me a little bit about um, the creation and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. Now, you're in Arizona, and you teach mainly at the Grand Canyon. That's your, I guess, your biblical, your, your backdrop you is. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain about the biblical, or what, what you teach with uh, the creation theory? Oh, sure, absolutely. We um, actually try to show folks that the foundation of the uh, gospel message is that God's perfect creation was corrupted by Adam's original sin that allowed death, evil, and suffering to enter God's perfect creation and separated man from God. Remember, Adam used to walk in the garden with God, but his sin separated man from God. So now we need to be redeemed with God. And that is that whole account is found in the first three chapters of the book of Genesis. And because we were separated, God promised a coming redeemer. In Genesis 3, verse 15, we're told that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. Well, that's the first promise of the coming redeemer, the seed of the woman. That means, well, the seed comes from the man. So we're being told that the coming redeemer will be born of a virgin. And sure enough, the, our creator uh, came to, to our earth in the form of Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, to sacrifice himself and redeem us with him. So what we're going to do in the Creation to Revelation uh, tour is to tie in the biblical foundations to the Holy Land, to the Word of God, and we're going to show people that even though the secular societies today teach millions of years leading to Darwinism as if they were science, and really those are two beliefs, millions of years of time is a belief, you have to believe in it, uh, Darwinian evolution is a belief, and we're going to destroy both of those on the tour. And we're going to leave people with really the overwhelming evidence that God's word is true, word for word and cover to cover. And we're going to do it right in the holy land where the Creator became flesh and dwelt among us. I mean, the Grand Canyon would be a great backdrop, but being in Israel and being there and teaching is going to be even better. It's awesome. Absolutely. Now, you're also going to have um, seminars. Uh, yes, both are. in Israel and on the Aegean cruise, right. which is something that's pretty neat. So you're going to do like some breakfasts, I think, and some dinners where you're going to actually sit down and everybody can learn and experience this, yes. which is something that not a lot of our groups do. So if anybody out there wants to join it, this is the tour you want to be on. Um, but that sounds like a good time. Now, what is your favorite spot in Israel? Wow. There are so many of them. I think one of my favorite spots is on top of Mount Carmel. And I love it because I can look out over the whole uh, plain of Jehoshaphat there and where the Battle of Armageddon is going to be fought. But then I turn my back and I look back at the Mediterranean Sea and I think of the prophet Elijah 
when he told his servant, go and look and see if there's a cloud. It hadn't rained for seven years. He goes back and he comes back, nothing goes back. Well, I can turn around there and I can just look up into that sky. And every once in a while when I'm there, there's a cloud and I can see it and visualize it. I think my second, probably my second most favorite part is Capernaum because that's where Jesus lived. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the action of Jesus took place. One of the neat things for me that brings the Bible alive in Capernaum is the milepost that they found there, the old Roman milepost. And that's where the tax collectors sat. And that's probably where Matthew sat, the Levite, when Jesus called him to be a disciple. That's exciting. It comes alive. It just brings life. I mean, we try, we try to tell people that. And until you've been in Israel and experienced it for yourself, it really does bring the Bible to life. My father always says, black and white to color, and that's what the Torah does. And I think your Torah, though, is going to take that to the next level because of the creation part. It so does. It's going to be exciting. Well, guys, thanks for coming down. I appreciate it. It was an awesome lunch. Um, and hopefully, if I can make it, maybe I'll join in Israel and we'll do some real eating. Now, my favorite spot next to yours is the Drew's Restaurant. They have the best food at that restaurant that we go to. Am I, am I right at the mountain? Uh, right? You're right. I mean, that is great. That is. So maybe I can fly in and maybe meet you there and go have lunch up there. There you yeah, go. That'd be fun. Well, thanks for joining us, guys, and uh, it's going to be a good tour. Great. Really cool, guys. Yeah. That was a world of information. Russ Miller, he's a cool guy. Yeah. And that tour of theirs is going to be really, really cool. Yeah, they're doing Israel. And then they're also doing a post extension, an Aegean cruise to Greece. So two countries, you can't yep. beat it. And he's going to do seminars. Um, I think a few seminars throughout the tour, and especially on the cruise. So that's something that you don't want to miss. If you're interested, go to our website, marinathetours.com. You can find his tour there. Um, you can also call us. Jenny's actually handling the group. So if you have any questions, you can email her, mtia at marinathetours.com, or give us a call, and she'll be able to sign you up. It's going to be a really cool tour. And they're going April 2nd into parts, 2014. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe, and smile. See ya!